fragrant shield gas protects the earth from the harmful portion of the rays of the sun, thus helping preserve life on the planet. A warm welcome to all. This year we celebrate the 35th year of the Vienna Convention and 35 years of global ozone layer protection. Life on earth would not be possible without sunlight. But the energy emanating from the sun would be too much for the life on earth to thrive where it's not for the ozone layer. This stratospheric layer shields earth from most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. Sunlight makes life possible, but the ozone layer makes life as we know it possible. The phase out of controlled uses of ozone depleting substances and the related reductions have not only helped protect the ozone layer for this in future generation, but have also contributed significantly to global efforts to address climate change. Furthermore, it has protected human health and ecosystem by limiting the harmful ultraviolet radiation from reaching the earth. In 1994, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed 16 September the International Day for the Preservation of Ozone Layer. Commemorating the date the signing in 1987 of the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the We, the Bart Blooming Bud Pedania, are here with you to celebrate the World Ozone Day. is the only known planet having life in this universe. We should respect and maintain everything we get from our Mother Earth.
without ozone is like a house without a roof. Save ozone, save life. Hello everyone. Good morning to all. My name is Srividya Ms. and I am from 12A. Today is 16th September 2020 and we all know what's the significance of this special day. Yes, today is the World Ozone Day. So here we have come up with a video that includes some of the basic details about the ozone layer. That is the various courses, various prevention methods and what we can do as a species on the earth to protect our mother earth. Hello everyone, today I am here to say the major pollutants and human made activities that cause ozone depletion. Certain chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons is the primary culprit that cause ozone layer depletion. Production of human made chemicals like CFCs as singly stellar. The CFC began to break more and more oxygen molecules and thus thinning their oxo oxo layer. Uh, a CFC is a molecule that contains carbon, chlorine and fluorine. It can be found mainly in refrigerants, aerosols and plastic products. When a CFC is exposed to the ultraviolet radiation, it can break down into substance including chlorine. These chlorine atoms get uh, react with the oxygen in the ozone and rip apart the oxo molecules or oxo layer. Hello everyone, now I am going to explain the importance of ozone layer and the measure we have taken to protect our ozone layer. 
As we all know, ozone layer blocks harmful UV rays from the sun and protects biological processes on the earth, which are essential for the sustenance of life. If not blocked by the ozone layer, exposure to ultraviolet radiation can increase the risk of cataracts, skin cancer and other detrimental effects among humans. The concern over exposure to biologically harmful levels of UV radiation has been the main driver of the creation of international treaties such as the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. Now we know that the chlorofluorocarbons are the major cause of ozone depletion. These substances should be banned or we should use their alternative so that in future we can protect ourselves from harmful effects of ultraviolet radiations. Human eye and skin are the most exposed part of the body to these radiations. So there is a high degree of incidence of blindness and skin cancer disease increasing day by day with the depletion of ozone layer. So we should protect ourselves by using sunglasses, sunblock creams and wearing covered clothes. Today, I am here to share some information regarding World Ozone Day. The International Day for the Preservation of Ozone Layer is observed on 16 September every year since 1995. This date has been chosen by the United Nations General Assembly in its resolution to remember the signing of the Montreal Protocol in 1987. The theme for this year is Ozone for Life, 35 Years of Ozone Layer Protection. This year, we celebrate 35 years of Vienna Convention and 35 years of Global Ozone Layer Protection. Life on Earth would not be possible without sunlight, but the energy emanating from the sun is too much for the life on Earth to thrive were it not for the ozone layer. This stratospheric layer, made up of three atoms of oxygen, she is earth from most of the harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sun. Certain chemicals such as CFCs, HCFCs and halons can damage the ozone layer. Ozone depleting gases used in aerosols and for cooling in refrigerators and air conditioners are thereby to increase the number of cases of skin cancer and cataracts and can damage plants, crops and ecosystems. Some of the ways in which we can save our ozone layer are ever buying and using aerosols and sprays which are made up of CFCs. Do not buy air conditioners or refrigerators that produce CFCs. Use public transport or bicycle or just simply walk to nearby distance. Follow four arts that is reduce, reuse, refuse and recycle. Using these simple ways, all of us can contribute to the protection of our environment. This is not anyone's priority, but the necessity of the whole world. Without waiting for others or the policies to be implemented, let's begin ourselves doing something for our environment. We conclude my words by saying that any long trip begins with the first step. 
So don't be afraid to take that big step. Thank you. Earth without ozone is like a house without a roof. Is a house safe without a roof? No. So is Earth safe without ozone? Absolutely not. So how do we protect the ozone from depletion? Good morning. I'm Agil Subramani from class 12 and today I'm going to talk on the topic ozone depletion. Earth's atmosphere has the characteristics that is found in different layers. A layer of ozone gas is found at an altitude of 20 to 30 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. It is named the ozone layer. Despite the layer being very thin, it is very important because it absorbs the ultraviolet radiation from the sun. If ultraviolet radiation reaches the earth, it damages all kind of life forms. Ultraviolet radiation is very harmful not only for humans but also for the trees, plants and animals. It can cause cancer and many dangerous diseases in the organisms. That is why the ozone layer is very important for life on earth. Scientists discovered in the 1970s that the ozone layer was being depleted. Atmospheric concentration of ozone were very naturally depending on temperature, weather, latitude and altitude, while substances ejected by natural events such as volcanic eruptions can also affect ozone levels. However, the natural phenomena could not explain the levels of depletion observed and scientific evidences revealed that certain main chemicals were the cause. These depleting substances were mostly introduced in the 1970s in a wide range of industrial companies. Ozone Hall Ozone depletion is greatest at the South Pole. It occurs mainly in the late winter and early spring and peak depletion usually occurs in early October when ozone is often completely destroyed in large areas. This severe depletion creates that so called the ozone hole that can be seen in images of Antarctic ozone made using satellite observations. In most years the maximum area of the hole is bigger than the Antarctic continent itself. Although ozone losses it's less radical in the northern hemisphere. Significant thinning of the ozone layer is also observed all over the Arctic and even over continental Europe. Most of the ozone depleting substances emitted by the human activities remain in the stratosphere for decades, meaning the ozone layer recovery is very slow, long process. Effects of ozone depletion for humans and the environment. Ozone depletion causes increased UV radiation levels at the Earth's surface, which is damaging to human health. Negative effects increases in the certain types of skin cancers, eye cataracts, and immune deficiency disorders. UV radiation also affects terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. The basis of the food chain is particularly adversely affected by highly UV levels. UV rays also affect plant growth, reducing agricultural productivity. Effects of countries around the world The 1985 Vienna Convention for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer was held in the Austrian capital, a meaningful effort to control ozone depletion substances. To attract worldwide attention to the problem of ozone layer erosion, the United Nations decided to celebrate December 16 as World Ozone Day. Apart from these international ramifications, various conferences and programs are also held all over the world. Regularly to protect the ozone layer, September 16 is declared as an international day for preservation of ozone by the Montreal Protocol 1987. At present, the growing use of many types of chemical industry made cutting of trees, the decay of ozone layer is increasing due to all these. In such a situation, it is our responsibility to plant trees so that oxygen remains in the atmosphere at the most and it creates ozone molecules. At the same time, industry owners and management should also take care not to use substances and processes that adversely affect the ozone layer. Since we have only one earth, 
So we have to stop messing with the nature for the survival of animals on this earth. Otherwise, the day is not far when humans will also be extinct. Thank you. Hi everyone. September 16th, the World Ozone Day. As we all know, now we are facing many problems due to the depletion of ozone layer. And the question is, are we the cause or the victim? Now, I am here to express two situations that we are facing today with the help of a still water. As I said, this is just a way to express my idea. The arrow shows the rays of the sun falling on the mother earth cause flood, heavy rain, tsunami, etc. The other half result, the drought, deforestation, disaster causing life of millions. What is precious? It has been hazardous. Due to our activities, the earth is nothing but polluted and this caused the depletion of ozone layer. So guys, we have the responsibility to save our earth. So save our mother earth, save life and stay safe. Thank you. Vice Principal, our Administrator Father Benjamin OIC, teachers and my dear friends. A very pleasant afternoon to one and all. Today, I stand before you to speak about World Ozone Day. This day is celebrated as the International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. This day also commemorates the signing of the Montreal Protocol which was in 1987. The theme of this Montreal Protocol is to reduce the substances that are responsible for the ozone layer depletion. First of all, let me ask some questions. What is ozone layer? How it is formed? What are its advantages and disadvantages? And so on. There are answers to these questions and these are very important to you all. Ozone layer is formed in the regions of Earth's stratosphere which absorbs most of the ultraviolet radiations from the sun. It has high concentrations of ozone in relation to other gases in atmosphere. Ozone layer is formed by chemical reactions between oxides of nitrogen and hydrocarbons. This chemical reaction occurs near the ground and high at atmosphere. There are two types of ozone, stratospheric ozone and tropospheric ozone. Stratospheric ozone is a good ozone because it protects us by absorbing ultraviolet radiations from the sun. Tropospheric ozone is a bad ozone because it triggers a variety of health problems like skin cancer, eye cataracts, etc. Chemicals that are responsible for the ozone layer depletion are halocarbons. Halocarbons are the compounds in which one or more carbon atoms gets bonded with one or more halogen atoms. Halocarbons that contains bromine usually have ozone depleting potential more when compared to those containing chlorine. Halocarbons containing chlorine and bromine are methyl chloride, methyl chloroform, carbon tetrachloride and families of compounds like halons, hydrochlorofluorocarbons and chlorofluorocarbons. From this day onwards, we must ensure that we will save the planet Earth. I said this as a message in order to save the environment. Let me conclude my words by saying that save ozone layer and protect ozone layer. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I have been given this opportunity to speak on ozone and its protection as we come to 35 years this year of the global ozone layer protection. A number of common use chemicals have been found to be extremely damaged in ozone layer. Halocarbons are chemicals in which one or more carbon atoms are linked to one or more halogen atoms that is bromine, chlorine, fluorine, or iodine. Halocarbons containing bromine usually have higher ozone depleting potential than those containing chlorine. The man-made chemicals that have provided most of the bromine and chlorine for ozone depletion are methyl bromine, methyl chloroform, carbon tetrachloride, and families of chemicals such as halo, chlorofluorocarbons, and hydrochlorofluorocarbons. In 1994, the United Nations General Assembly proclaimed 16 September the National Day for the Preservation of Ozone Layer, commemorating the date of signing in 1987. On Montero Protocol, on substances that deplete the ozone layer. In 2020, ozone for life, 35 years of global ozone layer protection. This year, we complete 35 years of the Vienna Convention and 35 years of global ozone layer protection. Life on Earth would not be possible without sunlight. But the energy emanating from the sun would be too much for life on Earth to strike where enough for the ozone layer. The stratospheric layer shields Earth from most of the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation. 
Sunlight makes life possible, but ozone would make life as you know it possible. So when the scientists working in the late 1970s discovered that humans were creating a hole in the protective sheet, the Arizona. The hole was created by ozone depleting substances used in aerosols and cooling such as refrigerators and air conditioning. Was increasing was threatening to increase the cases of skin cancer, cataracts, and destroy plants, crops, and ecosystems. The government's response was decisive. In 1985, the world's government adopted the Vienna Convention for the Protection of Ozone Layer. Under the Convention Water Protocol, government, scientists, and industry worked together to cut off 99% of all ozone depleting substances. Thanks to the Monde Protocol, the ozone layer is healing and expecting to return to its pre 1980s values by mid century. World Ozone Day, held on September 16, celebrates this achievement. It shows that cultural decision and action guided by science are the only way to solve major global cases. In this year of COVID-19 pandemic that has brought such social and economic hardship, the Ozone Treaty's message of working together in harmony and for cultural good is a message for all. The slogan of the day, Ozone for Life, reminds us that not only ozone is crucial for life, but that we must continue to protect the ozone layer for the future generation. Why ozone depletion concerns you? The ozone molecules which form a protective layer extends from about 60 km to 50 km above the Earth's surface at low latitudes and from about 8 km to 50 km at high latitudes. The ozone molecules absorb the sun's ultraviolet radiation which is harmful if it reaches the Earth's surface. With more ultraviolet radiation reaching the Earth's surface due to ozone depletion will cause damage to human life and environment. The most significant effects are increased incidence of skin cancer, eye cataracts, and damage to human immune system and to the ecology of the Earth. Now, let us discuss about the causes of this phenomenon. Ozone light depletion is caused by ozone depleting chemicals. This chemical contains chlorine or bromine atom with inherent chemical stability and have a long lifetime in the atmosphere in the range of 40 to 150 years. These chemicals and other trace gases drift up into the stratosphere and get involved in reaction that releases chlorine. Chlorine then reacts with ozone molecules in the presence of sunlight and destroy the ozone molecules. These chemicals that destroy the ozone layer are extensively used man-made chemicals. This include chlorofluorocarbon, carbon tetrachloride, methyl bromide, methyl chloroform, halons, hydrochlorofluorocarbon, hydrobromofluorocarbon and bromochloromethane. Out of this, chlorofluorocarbon are the main cause of ozone layer depletion. Just one chlorofluorocarbon can destroy tens of thousands of ozone molecules. We get rid of ODS. There has been considerable progress in finding non-ozone depleting substitutes for ODS in the past few years. Substitutes for air conditioning and refrigeration applications are now available. For example, HCFC 22. It can be replaced by HCFC 410A. There are markets for drop-in replacements for HCFCs and halons. Alternative products are now used in some cases, including alternative insulating material, substitute food containers such as hydrocarbon blown polystyrene, plastic film wraps or bags. Alternative packaging material such as plastic film bubble wraps are now used. Air conditioning and refrigeration plants operating on non-HCFC refrigerants. HCFC's solvents can be substituted in some applications. For instance, petroleum solvents can be selected as a replacement for HCFC 113 or 111 trichloroethane in cleaning applications. Eco solution or even low cleaning technology has now been introduced. It can be used in electronic industry, many household and personal aerosol products. Example, paint sprays and insecticides are now using hydrocarbon as propellants instead of HCFCs and CFCs. What is ozone air protection regulation about? This regulation prohibits the import of controlled products containing HCFCs, 
CSTs, halons, etc. An air conditioner or heat pump designed to cool the driver's or passenger's compartment whether or not installed in the motor vehicle. Refrigeration equipment or air conditioning or heat pump equipment whether for domestic or for commercial use. An aerosol product including those containing a pharmaceutical product or a medicine. Insulation panel, insulation board or an insulation pipe cover. Uh, a pre-polymer, portable fire extinguishers containing CFCs, halons, HCFCs or BCF. By air conditioning and refrigeration equipment that do not use HCFCs has refrigerant. By aerosol products that do not use HCFCs or CFCs has propellants. Conduct regular inspections and maintenance of air conditioning and refrigeration appliances to prevent and minimize refrigerant leakage. For existing air conditioning and refrigeration appliances that operate on HCFCs or CFCs refrigerant should be recovered or recycled whenever an overbit of the equipment is to be carried out. Replacing or refitting such equipment to be operated on non HCFCs refrigerant should also be considered. When motor vehicle air conditioner needs servicing, make sure that they are properly recovered and recycled instead of being invented to atmosphere. Thank you.
and when the sun goes down. Her walls among the aces inside a timid pair of the minutest cricket, the most unworthy club. When all the children sleep, she turns the storm away as will suffice to light her lamps. Then, bending from the sky with infinite affection and infinite care, her golden finger on her lips will silence everywhere. First of all, ozone depletion is the gradual thinning of Earth's ozone layer in the upper atmosphere caused due to the release of chemical compounds containing gaseous bromine or chlorine from industries or other human activities. And then here are some of the ozone depleting substances. Chlorofluorocarbons, halons, carbon tetrachloride, methyl chloroform, hydrochlorocarbon. And then the impact of ozone depletion. For human beings, it can cause both skin cancers, sunburns and premature aging of the skin. And in agriculture, it can reduce the growth of plants. And to prevent this, we must take some steps and here are some of them. World Ozone Day is observed on 16th September every year to spread awareness among people about the depletion of ozone layer and search possible solutions to preserve it. Thank you. There is a layer which acts as a shield for us. A layer which protects us from the ultraviolet emissions of the sun. A layer due to which life is not miserable on earth. Yes, I am speaking about the ozone layer. An ozone layer, as you might all know, it's a layer on the Earth's surface which absorbs the ultraviolet emissions of the sun. It is safe to absorb up to 99% of the ultraviolet emissions of the sun, which otherwise would damage all the exposed light poles. Ozone layer was discovered in the year 1913 by French physicists Charles Fabry and Henri Boisson. It is found out on the lower part of the stratosphere, approximately 15 to 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now studies reveal that this ozone layer is getting depleted fast by the use of CFC compounds, which are used as cooling objects in the refrigerants, etc. Now, life without an ozone is like a man without an umbrella in a heavy rain. He is likely to get fever or cold. Similarly, as without an ozone layer, is like uh, diseases like cancer and skin diseases will be a common thing. So, monitoring protocols were adopted to ban the use of CFC compounds. So, I would like to conclude my speech by saying that reduce the use of ozone depleting compounds. Save ozone, save air. Thank you. Ozone or no ozone, the choice is yours. Save ozone, our planet safe zone. Earth without ozone is like a house without a roof. Save ozone layer.
15 to 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface, a gas called ozone surrounds the planet. The ozone layer acts as a barrier between Earth and the ultraviolet radiation from the Sun. However, pollution has caused the ozone layer to thin, thereby exposing life on Earth to harmful radiation. The ozone layer is Earth's sunscreen, absorbing about 98% of UV rays from the Sun, which is known to cause certain types of skin cancer, immune deficiency disorders and eye cataracts. UV light affects ecosystems, altering growth, food chains and biochemical processes. We came to realize, realize that a certain chemical called chlorofluorocarbons or CFC is the major culprit for the breakdown of the ozone layer. So it is not an exaggeration to say that a threat to the ozone layer is a threat to human life itself. So today, all across the globe, we celebrate Ozone Day. September 16th was designated by the UN General Assembly as International Day for the Preservation of the Ozone Layer. This designation had been made in commemoration to the date in 1987 when nations signed the Montreal Protocol of Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. Now you must have already come across this information since it is the first line in the Wikipedia page for Ozone Day. As a class 12 student, I can confirm that all the information up till now is this basic knowledge provided to all children starting from 4th standard. But I can bet that almost none of you would have even bothered to look up what the Montreal Protocol actually is and how it came into existence. So let's go back to the 1970s when some very questionable choices were made. First of all, the hairstyle. <laughs> Second of all, the objectively terrible use of hairspray. And third of all, CFCs, a man-made chemical that was made to use as a propellant in aerosol spray cans. And see, this CFC became a huge problem and quite ironically, Human safety was what motivated the invention of CFCs in the first place. In the early times of refrigeration, refrigerators used certain toxic and inflammable compounds like propane and ammonia, and the industry needed a safer alternative. So in 1982, a scientist called Thomas Midgley invented the first commercially viable CFC. This was a remarkable invention that paved way to modern day air conditioning and refrigeration. But it wasn't until about 40 years later that scientists realized that this CFC goes high up in the air and breaks down the ozone layer. And this brought up a lot of public confusion. This ultimately led to the banning of CFC in aerosol spray cans in a number of countries. So the story doesn't end here because CFC was used in much more than just spray cans. In 1985, scientists discovered the Antarctic ozone hole. What they found in less than a decade was that more than a third of the ozone had simply vanished over an area larger than the size of China. In 1987, the Montreal Protocol banned the production of ozone depleting substances. Scientists estimated that it would take almost 50 years for the chlorine in the atmosphere to regain its natural state. Today, we celebrate the 32nd anniversary of the Montreal Protocol. Global action taken under this protocol has halted the depletion of the ozone layer, allowing it to heal. Much more has to be done in order to ensure a steady recovery of the ozone layer. Reportedly, as on April 2020, the largest ozone hole above the Arctic has almost closed. The self-healing process of the ozone layer has nothing to do with the COVID-19 lockdown, contrary to many beliefs. The polar vortex is, was, is what helped heal the ozone hole. The polar vortex is a large area of low pressure and cold air surrounding both of Earth's poles. The high altitude currents bring cold air to the polar regions. 
The hole was understood to be a result of low temperature at the North Pole. Nevertheless, the ozone layer is not expected to fully recover before the second half of this century. Most of the man-made ozone depleting substances are also potent greenhouse gases. Some of them have a global warming effect of up to 14,000 times more than that of CO2, carbon dioxide, the major greenhouse gas. Abraham Lincoln was also thinking of taking bold action 150 years ago when he said, The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty and we must rise with the occasion. He was speaking before the US Congress to confront the defining issue of his time, slavery. Everyone knew that it had to be stopped, but no one had the political will to actually do it. Remarkably, his words ring true today when applied to the defining crisis of our time, climate change. You know that climate change is happening faster than even the most pessimistic of scientists ever predicted decades ago. Now, as environmental activist and actor Leonardo DiCaprio has said, Imagine the shame that each of us will carry when our next generations look back and realize that we had the means to stopping this devastation, but simply lacked the will to do so. Inaction is also an action. Choosing to ignore the situation is equivalent to not contributing to the present global crisis. We see not just environmental activists being concerned about climate change, but also civic and religious groups, the military, the businesses and even teenagers. So wherever you find yourself on that spectrum, the world needs you on the table today. Because if we want to solve this crisis, then it's going to take action on all levels, from the individual to the international and everything in between. Massive change is required now. We all know that reversing the course of climate change will not be easy. But the tools are in our hands if we apply them before it is too late. As citizens of the planet, it is time to declare no more talks, no more excuses, no more 10 year studies. That is our charge now. You are the last best hope for Earth. We ask you to protect it. Or we and all living things we cherish. Our history. Now is the time.